what I'm hearing is that for a lot of us, um, there's a loss of hope. We're seeing a future unravel, which is definitely not the future that we want. As the hits are coming, our world is literally being rocked in its foundations, in the very fabric of how we've built it. And this is at a bigger level, but this is also within our own lives. And during these times, it can be hard to sustain hope. But there is hope. What I want you to see is that what is happening right now is simply the fall of an old system and the birthing of a new, of a new system of what I call the new. And births are messy and that is okay. But I don't want you to just look at the ending that is happening. I want you to shift to start to notice where the birthing is happening and join us who are committed to that birthing, to supporting it, to making it happen and making it happen at scale. And where that starts is to simply orient yourselves within this new reality. And one of the things, for example, that I've found fascinating, and I'm going to do some generalizing here, okay? That, that in terms of, for example, the fear around the food shortage as a result of Ukraine. Well, in terms of the whole piece around fertilizers, we have two industries fundamentally on the planet. And one is organic, which is much more part of the new. Now, that industry is being much less impacted than the old industry, which has been based on fertilizers. Let's call them much more chemical, just to simplify everything. And I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of the debates on that. But what I want to see is that even if one aspect of the world is now being blocked and may not work and is being disrupted, other aspects are doing okay. You know, we're now seeing, for example, in terms of organic agriculture, that we can produce a lot more than we thought we could. And so there is a piece here to start to notice that there are some things that have stopped working and are being disrupted. But there's some, the things that are connected to the new, so for example, energy crisis. Well, yes, the old ways that we've relied on for too long in terms of energy are being disrupted. Now, what's interesting is 10 years ago, I was involved in a project and we were trying to bring a new system to Germany. Now, if that system had been implemented, we would not be having the conversations that we are having now because actually emissions would have been reduced to the level that is needed to be able to compensate for what's going on in Russia. But for different reasons, because it was new, it was complicated, we don't want to change, that system is not in place. And so what I'm trying to show you is all that's happening is that all these places where we have been hanging on really tightly to the old ways of doing things are being disrupted. That's all that's happening. But it doesn't mean we don't have the solutions. We do have the solutions, but on the other side of being willing to change. And so the choice that we have now is as the old world is falling, Will we step into the new world and then really accelerate in that world so we can build it fast at scale? The only bit that we're struggling with right now is we're stuck in the middle. We want to hold on. We kind of know, we really know we've got to change, but we just don't want to cross the threshold. 
and it's time that we did. And the hits are going to keep happening until we do. And so in terms of you navigating this period, it starts with you crossing over the threshold. In your own life, in your own work, how can you start contributing to the new world? What is the new world that you want to see? And what are you going to now start to contribute to building it? Start with you cross the threshold.